Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Exodus chapter 37, verses 10 to Exodus chapter 38 and verse 31. And uh, here, what the Lord had already previously told from chapter 35, everything is again being mentioned as to how they made it. And almost we don't see any difference. And uh, there are three crucial things that we see in this whole portion. The first thing is that they made everything as the Lord had commanded. There was nothing that they added. There was nothing that they changed in order to be more appeasing or more elegant or uh, to look more attractive because the, ma the main motive and the objective of creating or, or making the tabernacle was that the Lord's presence will come down. And uh, the Lord's presence came down into the ark because they obeyed the Lord 100% in making the ark. Every time the Lord's presence always comes upon the obedience of his people towards his word. And uh, from here onwards, we see each article being mentioned specifically. The first thing is uh, the making of the table. This table of shoe bread was uh, overlaid with gold. Everything inside the um, holy place and the most holy place was overlaid with gold. But anything outside the holy place was overlaid with bronze. And uh, uh, this was a very crucial difference because outside it showed judgment, bronze showed judgment. And because that was the place where fire and uh, the outside environment had its effect, so it had to be rugged bronze. But then when you come inside, it's a safely protected environment. And uh, the outward court shows the annihilation of sin. And the inside court, it shows the nearness of his people to the Lord and how they minister to the Lord. And the most holy place is going and resting in the Lord. Now, these are three crucial aspects in the life of every believer. The first thing is the annihilation of her sin or the atonement for his sin that is done at the cross. And then the second part is Christian life, wherein each and every day we walk with the Lord, we minister unto the Lord and we labor for the Lord. But then the ultimate thing is that when we go into the presence of the Lord, wherein we totally rest upon who Christ is, we totally lean upon who Christ is and are totally satisfied by who Christ is. So inside uh, the most holy place, we see the Ark of the Covenant and in the holy place, we see uh, the table of shoot bread and uh, the altar of incense and uh, the lampstand. The table uh, of uh, shoe bread, it shows that these fresh loaves of bread that symbolize the 12 tribes of uh, Israel, it is, it is keeping the bread in the presence of the Lord or the children of Israel living in the presence of God. Now, this is uh, to show the relationship that Israel had with God and uh, Israel uh, wanted to stay before the presence of God. That is the safest thing for any believer in this whole world. In fact, when Martin Luther was asked as to what his life's motive was, he said his life's motive was uh, Coram Deo. And Coram Deo means living before the face of God. This is the ultimate uh, uh, objective of uh, a believer because when we live before the face of God, that was what the shoe bread was showing, living in the presence of God. And uh, when we live in the presence of God, then we have an eternal perspective. When we live in the presence of God, we live with fear and trembling in order to please the Lord. When we live in the presence of God, we live a faithful life. So uh, this shoe bread shows living in the presence of God. And then uh, the second part, uh, he goes on to speak about the lampstand. And this lampstand shows the Israelites' response to the glory of God. The glory of God came from the most holy place. And Israelites, they lighted their lamps in order to show their response to this glory. Or in other words, in the New Testament language, it's like the Lord Jesus was telling, let your light so shine that uh, people may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So when God was sending out his glory, then the Israelites were also living lives that uh, glorified his presence, that give uh, that gave honor to his presence. So living in the presence of God, honoring the presence of God. And then the last part, it speaks about the altar of incense in the 
holy place and this altar of incense uh, was uh, to give pleasure to the Lord and because of the incense that they offered and the reason this incense this sweet smelling incense uh, gave pleasure to the Lord was not because God really smelled it and uh, not because of the fragrance but because of the obedience of uh, the saints because of the obedience of the priests and because of the desire of the priests to please the Lord this is this is Christian life living in the presence of God and uh, um, honoring the presence of God and uh, having that desire to please the Lord every second this is the central message of the uh, holy place of the tabernacle and when we come to uh, 38th chapter here he talks about uh, the burnt offering or the altar of uh, uh, burning uh, the offering that was kept the bronze altar uh, that was kept on the outer court and this bronze altar it showed the judgment of God that fell upon the sin of man and this was a replica of uh, or a pointer towards the cross wherein God's wrath fell upon the Lord Jesus to take away and to atone for our sin and from there uh, the second article in the outer court was the bronze uh, um, labor with its bronze pedestal and this was given uh, by the women who served in the uh, outer court in the tabernacle and these people they would have done all the washing the cleaning the repairs and all these works so these people gave their bronze in order to be uh, um, used uh, for the making of the tabernacle and the final part of uh, chapter 38 uh, was uh, how um, the tabernacle was made there are three offerings that are being written here the first offering was a free will offering and the free will offering uh, they gave scarlet yarn, they gave gold and they gave all of these things it was free will offering so this free will offering amounted to a huge huge uh, amount of gold it was almost a thousand kgs thousand kilograms of gold and uh, so much was given and uh, this was used for the making of the tabernacle so uh, God's uh, house and the work of God's house first of all it always goes forward with the willing offering of saints with the willing gifts of saints uh, wherein they wishfully out of desire not just to be blessed but out of a clean heart and out of a joy and out of a, a pleasure to give to the Lord they give to the Lord heavily so this was the first offering that was used the second offering that was used was a was a definite offering that the Lord had told that everybody who had crossed 19 years uh, in the census they had to give their offering and it was half shekel uh, or in other words um, uh, this tax had to be paid by every Israelite who had crossed uh, 19 years and uh, uh, there were around uh, uh, 6 lakh, uh, uh, more than 6 lakh people, 6 lakh uh, 3,550 people and uh, they all gave half a shekel uh, silver and the 3,000 shekels made one talent uh, and uh, one talent was 34 kgs or in other words these people paid their tax in silver and uh, their silver amounted to around uh, more than 34,000 kgs so this uh, silver was used in order to make all the basement for the whole tabernacle or in other words it was the atonement it was the tax that they paid for their own atonement so uh, the whole tabernacle stood upon the um, uh, obedience of people stood upon the atonement of people God's presence and God's uh, uh, purpose always stands upon obedience and upon uh, uh, the atonement that the Lord gives us and the third offerings that the uh, uh, with which the um, uh, tabernacle was made was uh, by the uh, willful offering of talent and willful offering of skill that people invested whether it was uh, Bezalel or Ohalaib and uh, the others they gave their willful time and their talent in order to uh, make the tabernacle and finally we see that Moses brought the um, uh, vision or the pattern of the tabernacle Aaron and his sons were willing to serve so all of these uh, combined brought in the presence of God it was the willful offering 
it was the obedience offering and uh, it was the uh, skill that people willfully used for the Lord and it was the waiting upon the Lord and bringing the pattern and it was the labor of Aaron. So all of these five things in the Old Testament brought the presence of God into the tabernacle and this tabernacle was a visible uh, emblem to show the Lord was among the Israelites. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, O Lord, for this wonderful um, pattern of tabernacle wherein thy children could give willfully and uh, as obedient people and uh, their, their time, their skill, their uh, labor help us also to invest in the church. Help us to invest, O Lord, to bring your presence into this wicked world. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.